uh, part. <laughs> Putting powder in this powder measure. I'm using 70 grains of black powder. Yep, eight. Your powder goes by uh, volume, not weight. Basically, you just fill it up. Yep, you just fill it up here, kind of fill it up. Today, the wind's blowing it around. Try not to drop your gun. And you gotta put the powder in first. But we'll forget all about that. And then you got this patch here, it's pillow ticking. And I got a little bit of pre lube on it, but I still like to put a little spit on there. Good for you. Helps it slick down the barrel. This here's a ball starter. Yeah. You're in there. That. And then you got to see the down. Yeah. 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 Want it all the way down in there, otherwise it'll create a lot of pressure. Yeah. It might blow up. But that's uh, that's about it. She just got older. Threw them in the pot towel and she loaded her pot. You're at a rendezvous at the little Niangua campground, which is off J Road, and this is uh, our sixth year for having the rendezvous. And a rendezvous is set up by uh, to reenact what rendezvous were back in the 1840s, and that was because the traders uh, wanted to let the trappers hunt a little bit longer, so they came out to the uh, plains and set up tents or lodges and things like this and then the trappers could come there instead of having to go all the way back to St. Louis for the for their furs and of course when you have a bunch of men together what do you do? they start bragging I shoot better than you I can you know so then they had the contest so they have a contest a shooting contest and the hawk and the knife they throw those and we have some traders and we have them just some campers and uh, the people that come in we call them flatlanders and because we come from the mountains and uh, we just have a good time and reenact and let let people know what it was like back in the 1840s and what you know what the people had to to do the table and chairs all fold down and go into the top of the into the the top of the table and it ends up looking like a suitcase and it is as close to period as we could get because the uh, traders would come out in wagons and things and they would set uh, tents up and so on and so forth um, so that is um, as period as we can we cook on fire um, and uh, we, we try to make it as, as original as, as what they did. I will admit we do have some <laughs> coolers with ice hidden away, but other than that, why we pretty much, you know, live the life. We've been doing this probably for 18 or 20 years, and we started out, um, my husband was on a quest. He wanted, we're from western Kansas, and he wanted, um, always when we would go home he would say I'd love to see this land when the buffalo roamed and a friend of his said he knew a place that he could do that uh, and so he went uh, we started going to rendezvous and he picked up clothing and, and his gun and everything and then um, went out to this farm and uh, 
shot a buffalo and had to skin it and whatnot and that just kind of got us started and we we're both teachers so we wanted to pass on the history um, of our ancestors. It's fun uh, and the people are great and you make some good friends and, and so you look forward to seeing them at the next camp. But it, it's not easy putting all this stuff up and then of course when it's all over you have to take it down and put it away and if it's wet then you have to take care of that when you get home. So it's not all fun and games but it's, it's a, it is a fun thing to do. Well, what we're doing is uh, we're uh, recreating a time period of between the 1820s, 1830s, fur trapping era, and it's called uh, a rendezvous. And what what this represents is that the mountain men would go up and trap all year long and get their furs and everything, and then they would go to a rendezvous to trade in their, their furs that they got for that year for supplies and stuff that they needed for the, the next year. And the fur trapping era was uh, very popular, you know, for beaver, because they made a lot of hats out of them and stuff like that. But this is what this represents, is just going back in time to that era of the, the mountain man and the fur trapper. Yeah, well, you know, this is something that people do because, you know, first of all, it, it recreates history, makes people appreciate, you know, uh, you know where we came from. And second of all, there is a camaraderie down here in the mountain men. You know, it's just like a brotherhood. You know, it's it's like, you know, a, a bond. You know, because I've I've been doing this for 25 years, and and I've seen people and met people that I don't even know their names, but I see them like once a year at a rendezvous, and it's like we're just old friends. You know, it's just, you know, that just kinship there. You know, kindred spirits. Can you kind of tell us what you, what this chair is and, and how it folds down? Well, this is just a standard lounge chair that us mountain men use. It's just built out of wood, and you uh, take it and fold it up. That way, you can put it on your pack animal or carry it easily. And it's a uh, nice setting, low to the ground, so you can work on your fire and stuff like that. Well, we hope we hope uh, that people, you know, like we need new younger generations coming in, you know. And it cycles all the time, you know, you got young people coming in and, and, and old people going out. But, but we try to recreate this as authentic as we can, you know, uh, like starting a fire with a flint and steel, uh, you know, having candle lanterns and, and stuff like that. I mean, yeah, we do have some uh, modern day coolers and stuff, but we keep them out of sight or keep them covered to, uh, you know, keep it authentic. Mm -hmm. But you know, a lot of these guys down here build all their stuff, you know, like I've got a, a war shirt over there that I hand built and I built these these buckskins and a lot of people make knives and, and uh, just they try to do everything like they did it, you know, 150 years ago. This is called a capote coat, which is French for blanket coat. And it's made out of a steel wool or made out of a wool blanket Ain't like Hudson Bay or something like that. This is what mountain men use blankets for, is making coats out of. Well, it's just, you know, it's just, it's just like anything else. I think that, you know, it's just something that people, you know, you know, some people like to do other things. You know, they like a boat ride. They like to, you know, this is just something if you like it and you're into it. You know, it's it's a great deal because uh, you. you there's rendezvous all over the country. You can go to a rendezvous every weekend somewhere. And uh, they've got big national rendezvous where there'd be a thousand camps, you know. And so it is quite big and uh, it's just a good, good time. Good, clean time. You just cut the noggin off the side of a tree and burn it out and, and skin it all down and make you a cup out of it. Very neat. There's a lot of uh, a lot of education. I mean, there's some guys down here that uh, do scrimshaw and make powder horns. There's some guys down here that that uh, you know uh, work on on uh, uh, buckskins, and there's some guys that build these these tents here. You know, and you know, somebody almost everybody's got a, a one certain thing that they're really good at, and that's you know that's what they do, and it just all combines together and makes everything you know kind of like a whole thing 
but the history and everything is so fascinating and the hardships that the mountain men had to go through is just is just unbelievable you know just like uh, uh, Hugh Glass you know he, he got uh, mauled by a bear and had to crawl on his belly for two two months to get back to civilization and he made it you know that's how sturdy and hard those people were and that's what I try to, to stress to the younger generation that you know they got all the computers and they got everything hot showers and everything but this, this takes you back to where you really appreciate that hot shower whenever you get home <laughs> mm -hmm. you know uh, this is a early French style waistcoat. the natives wore them a lot just as something to throw over the top the, it's got a finger woven sash with the beads uh, woven into it. The neck knife, this is an Iroquois style. It's got quill work on it, which came before beads. And we take the, the quills off the porcupine dime, and then this is kind of stitched on, kind of like embroidery. And it takes a lot longer than the bead work does. And then a lot of other trade things, you know, natives love shiny things. So, you know, we had a lot of copper beads. This is actually handmade ones that were made by us. Whereas the brass beads were something that we traded for. And the feathers that I wear on my head are, uh, they show that I'm part of a warrior society. The tattoos show my ranking in the warrior society. And a lot of the men wore these in the different tribes, not the big war bonnets, but stuff like this. And it represented the, the top of a woodpecker's head because a woodpecker was a very sacred bird to us. And it was a warrior bird. If you watch the males fly around, they actually attack each other for their, uh, for their own area. So we wear these in honor of the, the woodpeckers. I am, yeah. I'm actually half native Iroquois and you know, this is, this is who I am most of the time. I make this stuff full time. This isn't just a hobby. So I go around and I teach a lot to different schools, historic societies, do a, I do uh, demonstrations and like how to do some of the, the metal works, how to do some of the quill work and, and tan hides and, and I also set up a lodge and the whole wigwam and teach out of that to where they can see how we lived in a day-to-day -day basis. You know, it wasn't just a tent sitting out somewhere. It was actually a lodge house, had a fire inside, warm, comfortable, had beds. And, you know, you could cook inside or cook outside depending on the weather. So because it was handmade, it all really meant something to you. Nowadays, you can go out and buy anything you want. You know, you want a fancy knife, you go buy it. You know, back then they had to make it or know someone that made it and trade for it or uh, like the decorations and stuff. All this means something. It's not just something pretty on there. Uh, it, it actually has to do with, you know, these are plants, this is a river, and it all talks about day-to-day -day life, which makes us remember who we are every day, be thankful for what we have. You know, nowadays people, you know, they have a, a 5,000 square foot house and they still don't have enough. Back then we lived in a small house with our family, everybody was close and we learned from our elders, you know, and, and the old stories that we taught actually taught kids things, you know, on how to be a, a good adult, how to take care of their people. And the one thing I always try to, to let the kids know is all my warriors tattoos, you know, they think of a warrior going out and killing. Well, that wasn't a warrior meant you took care of the people no matter what. If you gave them the shirt off your back, if you were feeding them, if you were building shelter for them, or if you had to protect them through war. You know, it was it was a day-to-day -day thing, and that's how you acted all the time. There were no, you know, well, I don't feel like helping anybody today. I'm going to stay home and watch TV. You know, you were just out there taking care of each other. Okay, this is, this is copied off of an original that was made in the 1500s. It was a... It was a Dutch gun that was actually commissioned by a lord to give us a gift to a war chief over here. And all these, all the pieces are all handmade. Uh, a lot of the weapons, you know, with, with a gun like this, you only have one shot. And natives love multi-use things, so it's also a war club. And it was, it was designed after our style of club, but with the, the European styling with the gun on it. Um, usually start out with your piece of wood then you have to, once you get your barrel made, you inset it, and the lock has to be inset, all the pieces go together. And uh, they made many different styles of guns like this that the, the Europeans didn't use as much as they were made as gifts to the different natives to try to, you know, make them 
align with them because uh, we called these fire sticks because it shot a big flame out. We didn't have anything like this, so it was it was pretty amazing to be gifted something like this. Oh yeah, well that's what I do in the winter time is uh, run trap lines, and then uh, uh, in the late late winter, then I uh, sit around tan them all and sell them. I ship a lot of them to. Uh, um, Canada and sell most of them that way you know but we bring them out to these rendezvous and uh, trade them for things and I make hats I make coonskin caps um, we don't have one of them out right now but uh, that's about the only thing I make out of them uh, personally other than they just kind of tablecloths or something you know deer hides are the hardest thing to make I got another one I'll have at the pump tear rendezvous great place to be I'd rather just do this and not have to work <laughs> but you got to work to do this so that's the way that goes yeah oh yeah the shooting mats great and hang around this old stuff you know pre uh, 1840 stuff that's the way they did it back then pretty much you know yeah the trapping's been the same not much difference you can do a dirt hole set for a predator is it still a dirt hole set for a predator, you know? Uh, yep, and a water set for a coon is the same blind water set that they've been doing for uh, 200 years, you know? Um, the traps have changed a little bit. They're a little bit uh, more uh, advanced, I guess you could say, you know? The traps are uh, a lot better equipment now for that. Because coil spring, as whereas all the other guys had was these uh, long spring type traps. Uh, they still work. They work regular. It's just easier to it's easier to set a coil spring trap because it's smaller, more compact. So you don't have to dig up so much. Dad took me rabbit hunting, and that's pretty much what did the whole thing. After that, you know, uh, he never did trap. I kind of learned that on my own. Um, but uh, it's something that you can make a little money. It's a it's a hobby. It kind of pays for itself. <laughs> uh, hunting is good. Uh, you get food out of it, but it don't really pay much, you know, where to trapping it. I can, I make money on that, mm -hmm. especially these days. Uh, work's been short, so trapping season's been pretty, pretty important. I mean, really, paying some bills. <laughs> mm, don't buy much gas these days, but. Uh, um, so I make a little income off of it, and, and it's fun, you know, so. Um, I like I like to deer hunt too, but it just costs you to mount heads and stuff, and uh, unless you do it yourself, and it can be done, it's not that tough. Fun thing to do, and to learn about the way they did things, you know, back in the day is fun. It's also fun, and it's, it's fun for me just to experience it, and uh, and just getting away is a a big deal too. It's, that's a lot. <laughs> This comes down to uh, kind of being back with nature and uh, um, doing things traditional ways that people did in the and back in the in the time, you know, in the during the period. That's what they call it during a period. So um, it's uh, uh, why you do it. I don't know why you do it. It's just. Uh, <laughs> It's a great thing to do and, and the people around here all the neighbors are you know we kind of uh, see them at in at, at, at events you know and get to be friends with them and it's kind of a ongoing thing you know to meet different people and uh, they have the same you know thoughts and want to do the same thing that you do you know so it's kind of a good thing and everybody's good there's no stealing around here nothing you know it's uh there's an honor system you can leave your weapons sitting around and stuff and you know there's not really a danger of um, I don't know what you call it you know people are just uh, pretty straight up around here it uh, it hold up snow hopefully it uh, hold through a storm if it storms <laughs> it could blow down though uh, it's pretty fun it's pretty basic uh, nothing really high tech about it Everybody's kind of got to get their own little version of their tents, you know. Um, there's a couple like this. 
Oh, so, uh, no, it's just a nice little, nice little place.